A decked area is the ideal opportunity to extend your living space. It could be the perfect barbecue spot or simply just somewhere to chuck a couple of sun loungers. Decking is also ideal around children's play pits and perhaps just jutting over a pool. Decking could also be the perfect solution to a garden problem. You might have an area of the garden which is damp and shady where the grass isn't growing very well. Why not pop a deck there for a table and chairs? First things first, you've got to pick the right site. Now, we're building a deck here which ultimately just sits flat on the ground, so ideally don't site something like that in the lowest point of the garden where all the water collects. Admittedly, the frame is treated, but it's just not going to last as long this way. Of course, if you are thinking of building a deck where there's lots of standing water, you just need to pop some legs on it. Do consider the view from your deck. That's quite important. You don't want to position it somewhere where you'll be nosing in on the neighbours or they'll be staring up at you. If you're going to build a deck next to a house, a few things to consider there. Firstly, you don't want to cover up any air bricks and nor do you want to compromise the damp proof course by, well, building your deck above it. And it sounds a bit silly, but make sure you can open the doors too. In urban gardens, drains are inevitable, but they're easy to deal with. Just make sure that you build a little hatch in the deck, which you can then simply remove to access the drain easily. And if you want to build a deck around a tree, and it really does look lovely, just make sure that you leave lots and lots of room for the trunk to thicken up and for it to sway in the wind. Now you don't need to be a carpenter to build a deck, you just need some basic skills. Just remember to plan a little bit before you start and do a few measurements as you go along. And of course, it does help to have an extra pair of hands too. We're laying this decking, which has already been pressure treated against decay, but these cut ends we're going to seal with some end grain preserver. Don't forget, always use gloves when handling grain preserver. The next thing we need to do is work out how big the deck area will need to be. And these are the chairs and the table that we're going to be using. Now, as a general guide, to accommodate a standard size table and chairs, you need about nine square metres of space. But here's a good tip. If you've got the dining set or the sun loungers, pop those in position and use these as the guide to the size of your deck, making sure, of course, that you've got plenty of room to pull the chairs back so that you don't pitch over the edge. Before you commit yourself, it's a really good idea to do a dry run. Lay out the frame, lay out the boards which go on top, and this way you can just see if the whole thing fits and where any cuts might be. Right, the frame. That's simple really. What we've got here is treated 6x2 timber, which we run round the outside, and then we pop it through the middle as well at various spacings for joists to take the weight. On the top, we then use the deck board, most important bit. These ones have got a grooved side and they've got a smooth side. It's up to you which one you use, but I actually prefer the smooth side because it's more comfortable underfoot. Now importantly, remember that the joists need to run in the opposite direction to the boards for strength. Doddle, really. It's essentially just a big ladder. And of course, we need to leave a gap between the boards of three millimetres to allow for rainwater to drain away. And a really good way to do this is to use a screw that's three millimetres wide as a spacer. Right, well, we're at the end here now. And importantly, we're factoring in the width of a deck board, which is going to be a face board to hide our frame all the way round. Now, this may seem like a bit of a faff having a dry run like this, but it really does pay dividends in the long run because, look, exactly as I feared, we've ended up with a horrible little sliver at the front here. So that would mean that we would have to cut a board down, which wouldn't really fix properly and it would well, just look a bit of a mess. So options. We can either extend the distance between each board just ever so slightly, or we can come in and we can cut the frame down a little so that we end up with a nice full board just like that. The timber used for the frame is standard treated 6x2, which you can pick up from most B&Q stores. You'll find it on sale in probably a couple of different lengths. So with the overall size of your deck in mind, buy those lengths which mean as little cutting as possible on the day. Once you've got the frame size, you'll need to work out how many deck boards you'll need to cover the top. Factor in the actual width of the deck board and then add on another three millimetres for each gap. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Loretta and I have almost finished marking out where we're going to remove the lawn and where our deck is therefore going to go. Now, we've used, well, builder's lines here and wooden pegs, but at home you could use garden canes and string. To check that we've actually marked the space out completely square, what we're using is a tape measure to measure from corner to corner. And if the two diagonal measurements are the same, it'll be square. Of course, you could also actually make the frame itself. And if it's square, pop that into position and simply cut round it. Good stuff. So we've marked out where our frame is going to go. And now I need to cut out the turf. And here I've just got a simple edging iron, which I'm using to cut alongside the string lines. And then once I've done that all the way round, I'll then use a spade to lift up the turf. If you haven't got an edging iron, you can just use a spade. The depth of the turf that we're going to remove, no more than two inches. We're showing you how to make a basic deck which sits directly on the ground. And we can do that here because the ground's really, really firm. Of course, it's really important that the whole site is level. And to do that, I've just got a board here with a spirit level on top, and I'm working my way over, knocking off any high bits and filling any low ones. Of course, you may find that you need to use a spade too. Oh, and don't forget to remove any large stones as you go. To stop any weeds coming through the decking, we're putting down this weed control fabric, making sure there's a decent overlap at the edges. This cuts out all the light, but it still allows rainwater to drain through. It's so much better than black plastic, because black plastic, well, it isn't permeable, so you'll have standing water underneath your deck. Uh, that's not a good idea. We're just covering the fabric with, well, any old gravel, bringing the height up to just below the surrounding lawn. Might need knee pads for this bit, just cutting the frame to size. So, mark off where we want. There we go. And then using a square, just going to pop a line in, which we can then cut to. We've already got the four pieces of timber, which will make up the outside of our frame, already cut. And now what we need to do is that we need to put two pilot holes in the ends of two of those boards so that we can fix the corners together. And then we're going to use a countersink drill bit so the coach screw goes in and sits far back enough so that when we put the facing board onto the front, it sits nice and flush. And these are particularly important because they will bear the weight and distribute it evenly that is when you're sitting on top, of course. Now, the distances between the joists, well, it does vary, but 400 millimetres from centre to centre is absolutely fine. So once you've got it all lined up, up at your end, then we just pop round to the front and pop our coach screws in. We've already cut our deck boards to the size that we want so that we can simply pop them on the top and screw them down. Just keep things nice and simple. One thing that you might come across, especially if your deck is bigger than the length of a board, is that you have to put a join in. If you do, make sure that the join sits in the middle of a joist, so that way you can get two really good fixing points. Then the next board that goes on, keep it as a full one and stagger the joints so you then get your join again, and then you get a full board, and then your join. Just makes it look nice and neat. And there you go, the finished article. Just pops in some pebbles around the front for a nice decorative finish. Now this is of course your basic ground level deck, but there are loads of different variations with which you can do at home. You might want to put some legs on it to raise it up, a handrail on the front if you're worried about people falling off, maybe even some lights to turn it into more of a decorative feature. 
And there are lots of different ways of customising your deck too. Here we've just used a simple natural stain, but if you want something bigger, bolder and brighter, there are a range of colours with which you can buy in store. There are many different materials available too. This is just treated softwood, but there's hardwood, decking tiles, even grass deck, which has strips of artificial turf in each board. So, lots to choose from.